international pressure for a ceasefire between Israel and Hamas is mounting after the deadliest day of violence in the region so far. The medical authorities in Gaza say that the number of people killed in Israel's bombardment of the territory has risen to 80. In the worst single incident on Sunday, 11 members of the same family were killed when an airstrike destroyed the home of a Hamas official. More rockets have been fired from Gaza into Israel, including two which were shot down over Tel Aviv by Israel's Iron Dome defence system. Meanwhile, the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says that Israel's military is ready for what he called a significant expansion of its operation in Gaza. Dawn breaks in Gaza with further evidence of this continuing conflict. Overnight, a thunderous explosion lights up the sky. And in a residential neighborhood in southern Gaza, chaotic scenes as emergency workers respond to the destruction of a three-story house, reportedly the result of an Israeli airstrike. The missiles are flying in both directions. Israel's Iron Dome interceptor system shot down two incoming rockets from Gaza on Sunday evening. Earlier on Sunday, more airstrikes on Gaza by Israel. One Israeli missile flattened the Gaza city home of a senior Hamas official, Mohammed Dalou, killing him and his family of 10. The indications are that this conflict has yet to run its course, but international pressure for a ceasefire between Israel and Hamas is mounting. The United Nations Secretary General Ban Ki-moon is due in the region. He's promised to make a personal appeal for an end to the violence. In a statement, he said, I strongly urge the parties to cooperate with all efforts led by Egypt to reach an immediate ceasefire. Any further escalation will inevitably increase the suffering of the affected civilian populations and must be avoided. People living in Gaza have mixed feelings about Mr. Ban's visit. I do not welcome him because he came here during the last war and did nothing for us. And he will never do anything for us. He's most welcome. We hope his visit will be a positive one. The key broker to any ceasefire, the Egyptian President Mohamed Morsi, has expressed optimism a deal to end the crisis could be reached soon. But whenever it comes, it'll be too late for those who've lost their loved ones. James Kelly. BBC News. Let's get more now. I'm joined now on the phone line by John Lyne, who's in Cairo. John, obviously, much focus on the Egyptian leadership on whether or not he, it can broker some kind of peace. Is there optimism around this? Well, I think there's a feeling that uh, both parties are interested in due course in a ceasefire, but at the moment they seem to be into some very hard bargaining. Uh, sources close to Khalid Mashal, the Hamas leader, who is here in Cairo, uh, have said that uh, the demands include an end to targeted assassinations of its leadership, ending the targeting of civilians, rebuilding Gaza, and opening all of the crossings between Gaza and uh, Israel. Well, uh, those conditions appear too high, and sure enough, an Israeli official is quoted on Israeli TV as saying uh, it is too high, the conditions are too high. In other words, both sides are talking, but they haven't clinched a deal yet. And of course, John, there's international pressure, the United States, the UN as well. What difference will that make? Well, the friends of both sides, the friends of the Israelis and the friends of the Palestinians are clearly working on them, trying to pull them closer. I think there is a strong desire amongst uh, all of the all of the all, all the allies of the both sides to bring this to a close now, because there is a fear that if this were to expand, if there is a ground offensive into Gaza, it could have very unpredictable consequences in this difficult time in the Middle East. So, a lot of people around them want to get a deal. It's a question of leaning on both sides to get them closer. John, you mentioned a ground offensive. How likely is that? I, I still think at the moment uh, it, it's it's not looking very likely, but it is still a possibility. My hunch from here, and I'm not in Israel and I'm not speaking to the Israelis, but my hunch from here is that uh, the Israelis are using this as a bargaining chip. They're, they're still prepared to do it. Uh, the best bluffs are always ones you're prepared to carry out, but they probably won't because uh, they're not getting great support from their biggest ally, the United States.
John, good to talk to you. Thanks very much for bringing us up to date. John Lyne is in Cairo there. He's following events as the Egyptians obviously try to broker some kind of peace. Um, but there are also correspondents on the ground in Israel as well and in Gaza. And you can keep up to date with them um, via Twitter. They're all tweeting from their various posts. Um, you can find them at, at BBC World forward slash BBC Middle hyphen East.